I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, before we let you all go, we wanted to close uh, Digital Preservation 2018 with a panel. Um, let's see here. There's the lights. Uh, we wanted to close with a panel entitled uh, Building and Leveraging Community uh, with the National Digital Stewardship Alliance. It doesn't look like the slides are advancing. Try that one more time. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to kick things off with some comments by uh, Robin Rugaber, who is the uh, chair of the coordinating committee. And then we're just going to kind of go down the line and hear from our interest groups and working group chairs. Um, but first, before we do that, I just wanted to uh, take a moment to thank you all for a wonderful day and a half of uh, conferencing and discussion and presentation and inspiration. Um, and I, I hope that we could all just give one more round of applause to all of our presenters. And with that, I'll turn things over to Robin. And we'll just forget the slides. <laughs> so I just have a couple of points. I wanted to start out not only by thanking DLF, all of the staff, and Bethany. I mean, this has been such a great conference, and it continues to grow and get better every year. And we couldn't possibly do it without these dedicated staff. But we also couldn't do it without all of the member institutions and the work that you put in in participating and giving of your time. Um, and so all of us and DLF staff want to thank all of our member institutions of, as well. So if everybody would just have a round of applause for members of DLF and all of you. And because of that relationship and things are going so well, NDSA has decided to work with DLF and renew our MOU in January for another three-year period. The coordinating committee got together this week and we, and we all believe in service rotation and that that makes our community stronger. And so in January, we have unanimously elected Bradley Daigle to be the new chair of the coordinating committee, and that will start in January. And we have two open seats on the coordinating committee, and we're asking for nominations. You'll see an email go out very soon. So be thinking deeply about people that have been contributing to the community and that you would like to see have a chance to work with the coordinating committee. I know when I was nominated, I had no idea who nominated me, but I was thrilled. I mean, it's been really great to be working with everyone on something that I think is important to us all. The other thing that the CC is doing is we're building a roadmap, and we've looked at a template and decided that that would be good. The CC is going to start off with actually uh, building up that framework a little bit, and then we're going to be reaching out into the community and gaining all of your ideas and help and input on building that roadmap out, which we think will guide us through the next three years. So now I want to turn it over to Lauren, who's going to talk about the agenda. Okay. I'm going to see, see it if that's okay. Can everybody hear me okay? All right. Um, so I'm, I'm standing in for Micah, who's the, the chair of this committee, but I'm a member and that I'm working as a, a section editor, um, along with a lot of other folks who've been working on the national agenda for the last couple of months. Um, so one date I wanted to kind of begin and end with, to in, in speaking about community and how much we want to hear from everyone, and I was also on the agenda um, section this morning, and that was a lot of really, really great discussion. So the date I want to put in your minds right now is December 1st. Uh, that's when we're going to be releasing the uh, draft of everything we've been working on for public comment and input, and we'll be sure to push that out to as many places as possible, because we really value your input. And you know, this is a chance for you to really give us 
uh, your ideas, look at gaps maybe in something that we may have missed in writing the agenda to bring your perspective. Um, this was something that happened during the meeting this morning and it was extremely fruitful, really great conversation around sustainability, how we're talking about um, work and what that means to be built into something like a national agenda. So just as a, as a quick reminder of what the agenda is, uh, and a little bit of contrast to what Robin had just said about a roadmap for NDSA, the agenda itself is not you know, a working plan for NDSA itself, but it's meant to characterize major challenges in the digital stewardship community. So when you're looking at and giving tons of comments on um, this draft when we send it out, keep that in mind. This is about, you know, about five years. Like, What do we really need to approach as a community? And we've had a lot of really great discussion um, here today on all of those topics um, and, ac and across the last day and a half. So to wrap up, um, for 2018, this is gonna be the third iteration of the agenda, and it has been a little bit since we updated it. So um, we're going to pretty much look at strategic advances over the last three years. So we're gonna take a look back at what we've accomplished, uh, as well as add some new priorities and remove those that maybe we've solved or at least are no longer a concern. Um, I think most of us in digital press know that solving is, it's a continuous process. So, um, and then also thinking about uh, shorter term priorities. So folks, if you were familiar with the last agenda, uh, we had structured it so that it was kind of talking about these large content stewardship uh, areas and challenges, as well as some actionable items and steps you could take uh, to address these challenges. So look for that same structure. So I'll end uh, by wrapping up again and saying look for early December. Uh, we're going to be doing a little internal review of the coordinating committee on the draft, but then we value and want and need your input. So I'll end on that. Okay, so, so hi everybody, I'm uh, Matt Schultz. I'm a uh, digital cur curation librarian at Grand Valley State University. Um, and I've had the uh, privilege this uh, past year of uh, co-chairing our content interest group uh, with, uh, with Lauren Work. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about uh, what we've focused on there. Um, we made a little bit of a, a pivot this year in terms of um, what we focused on and some of the work that we engaged in. Um, uh, prior to my coming on board um, the previous year, there was a focus on building out um, some specific content uh, case studies, um, uh, research data, newspapers. Um, so we've got uh, great resources that have been amassed um, under the content committee and that are available on the OSF project for folks to pick up with there. Um, this year, we, uh, we focused on um, surveying the members of the content interest group for their interest in um, studying specific types of content. Um, what came to the surface were things like um, email, um, uh, audiovisual materials, uh, web archives, um, image collections. Um, and so what we did, once we got a little bit of a consensus from folks, what they're interested in talking about is we, uh, we invited experts uh, from the field uh, to come in and um, spend an hour on our virtual calls um, talking about their work. Um, so in the area of um, uh, email, we heard from uh, Josh Schneider and uh, Glenn Edwards, um, uh, who are the developers and um, producers of uh, EPAD. Um, and learned a lot about the, um, that, that particular tool and um, uh, sort of the development track that it's been on. Um, we heard from, um, um, let's see here, sorry, uh, Jefferson Bailey on web archiving. Uh, we heard from Corey Weedman uh, on image collections and um, doing processing of uh, large scale uh, image collections. Uh, and then we um, most recently heard from Ashley Bluer um, uh, with Artifactual on AV collections. Uh, so we've recorded most of those, those sessions and um, folks can go and um, pull up our, our notes from the content interest group and they can catch up on um, all the details from, uh, from the expertise that was shared uh, from those recordings. Um, so we had a great uh, lunch working session today with the, the content interest group and folks who uh, came in, uh, shared their, um, their ideas, their expectations, uh, things that they'd like to engage in the year ahead. Um, we had some interesting conversations around how maybe we can produce some resources that, um, uh, that we could put in hands of curators to interface with um, uh, their IT departments uh, to help uh, make those folks a little bit more uh, aware of what uh, constitutes digital preservation for the content and the collections that we're, uh, that we're stewarding. So we'll look forward to picking that back up as we resume our content calls and uh, seeing what sort of interest there is around that. Um, so the content interest group was kind of also instrumental this past year. And in, so we have interest groups, uh, we have uh, working groups, and uh, the working groups have produced things like our uh, fixity report, um, our web archiving survey and report that's coming forward. Um, we now have subgroups, um, which uh, 
so when Lauren and I first uh, got together and started brainstorming uh, what we might focus on with the content interest group uh, this year, um, we both um, had work that we were engaging in uh, with cloud services and cloud platforms in different ways. Um, and we thought about, you know, is there something that we could sort of explore and unpack in terms of impacts to content in those environments? Um, as we talked about that, we realized that this is a, this is a big topic um, and it spans a lot of the different interest groups that, um, that are part of um, NDSA. So we peeled those, uh, we pulled that topic off into a subgroup um, and that's been running since April. And the idea behind that is just to open it up. Um, it's a subgroup, it's not a working group, it's really just an open forum for um, institutions uh, to come in and talk about their, um, their current or sort of anticipated use cases for using cloud services and cloud platforms, talk about their, um, their interests, the benefits that they see you know, for moving in those directions, but also the challenges and the impacts to, to data integrity. Um, we've heard from, uh, we have regular participation from, uh, from Deepin, from AP Trust, from DuraSpace, um, but a lot of other uh, institutions who are just kind of uh, getting started. Uh, and, and are, are anticipating having to do some of this work. Um, we've documented uh, use cases from those institutions on the calls. Um, we've had uh, um, them share their resources and best practices um, that they've made use of. We've engaged the broader community. We've even had um, uh, the Interparis group uh, from the Canadian context um, uh, provide us with their most recent uh, standards development um, so that we could look at that from, from a cloud perspective. Um, so the idea going forward is that we'll continue to foster conversations in this group um, from all of you uh, in terms of how you see um, the balance between uh, local infrastructure and uh, shifts to the cloud um, and continue to explore what sort of resources we can co-develop um, to support the work that, that we're inevitably going to continue to increasingly do in those environments. Um, my, one of my goals, um, as long as I get a chance to sort of work with this, this group um, and sort of push development forward, is to make sure that we're producing some resources that um, are actually gonna make a, a difference um, when we are working with some of these service providers. Um, most of their services and their, um, their technologies, their infrastructures are not geared towards our, our sector. Um, and they need to know what our needs are, they need to know what our use cases are. Um, and we need to get them to start to tailor some of their services towards, uh, towards our work. So um, I will pass it over to Nathan. Hi, I'm uh, Nathan Tallman, from a digital preservation librarian at Penn State, and along with Corey Davis, uh, co-chair the Infrastructure Interest Group. Um, both of us were kind of new to uh, co-chairing the infrastructure group this year. Um, and like the content interest group, we sort of adopted a uh, series of uh, sort of topics, uh, monthly discussions that were chosen and facilitated by uh, interest group members. Um, everyone sort of took a hand at facilitating a topic um, and sort of organizing a panel um, <clears throat> the call, uh, a discussion. Uh, we had eight calls. We have two more planned this year. Um, we had a working lunch today where we sort of did some planning for next year. Um, we're going to probably do the same thing. Uh, we might mix it up a little bit and alternate some, some uh, plan discussions, also leave some space perhaps for some um, ad hoc conversations and unplanned discussions to see what might emerge or what, um, what things we're, we're working on at the moment or, or things that are sort of of the day. Um, we sort of switched from Uber conference to Zoom midway and started recording our calls after we did that and posting them to a YouTube channel. Um, we do have community notes documents and we're posting those YouTube links um, onto that channel, um, onto that document. Um, we had 10 topics facilitated by nine interest group members. We're getting in between 40 or 60 people or so between our, um, on our meetings, uh, Zoom meetings. Um, our topics covered uh, include locks. Um, we covered collaborative storage infrastructure, uh, hearing about the Scholars Portal at the Ontario Council of University Libraries. Uh, we had a panel on infrastructure of di at different size institutions, including uh, NARA, the Smithsonian, the Getty Research Institute, and the George Georgetown Law Library. Um, we had a presentation on the NDSA Levels of Preservation Reboot, which we'll hear more about momentarily. Um, we had a panel on the cloud storage infrastructure, um, hearing more specifically from Stanford Digital Repository, DuraSpace, as well as Microsoft Azure. Um, we had an update from the Preservation Storage Criteria Project. Um, we heard about system and information security from the DLF Born Digital Access Group and our 
topics for November and December are emulation and costing for storage and migration services. Um, and sort of in between the topics too, we sort of fit in some, some more business uh, discussions as well and we had some, some sort of cross-pollination in trying to um, um, uh, encourage people to, to sort of join on to the, the, the cloud subgroup that was coming up because there's some obvious uh, connections here between infrastructure, um, cloud infrastructure, content, uh, using cloud infrastructure. Um, I think any sort of cross-pollination cross between these, these groups is always a good thing. Um, sort of coming up for 2019, some of the topics we talked about um, covering next year um, include uh, shared planning and service models for digital preservation infrastructure. So what does that uh, look like? You know, how do you work with, with IT and, and, you know, are you, um, again, this is sort of seems to be a common, common theme, maybe something further collaboration to talk about. Um, environmental impact of infrastructure choices. Um, international models for collaborative infrastructure. Um, dealing with scale, right? It just keeps growing. We just get more and more content. Um, you know, sort of, sort of facing that issue head on. Um, I think I heard at a lot of different panels today, you know, sort of hinting around this issue that we just get more and more content. Um, so please come join our calls. Uh, join, uh, join the conversation. Um, we'd be glad to have you. Maybe uh, volunteer to facilitate one of the topics. Um, some other things that are going on, uh, there is a st storage survey working group that's formed uh, to run the NDSA storage survey. It's been a few years since it's been run. Um, there should be a call coming out sometime soon to NDSA all uh, for volunteers uh, to help out with that, so take a look for that. Um, the Fixity Working Group that uh, issued its report um, will be looking to do a follow-up developing some use cases. Um, uh, sort of teasing out some, some specific stories from that report. Um, they'll be issuing a call as well for some volunteers, so to look for that as well. Um, and a little more on that, if, if you do have the bandwidth uh, to sign up for a working group, I would just highly encourage you to, to consider it. Um, you know, it, it's, it's important work, and it's work that needs to be done. Um, it's, it's, it's rewarding work to, to, to participate in these activities. Um, it's, it's stuff that we, we need to do, we need to take on as a community to solve some of these problems. Um, it's also good for your CV and dossier, so that never hurts. Um, so please do consider it when you see those calls to, you know, to, to volunteering your, your time and efforts uh, into making those contributions. Um, so thank you, and uh, Corey. Uh, thanks, Nathan. Um, so I'm here in uh, the capacity for the um, uh, one of the uh, one of the major initiatives being undertaken this year um, around uh, the levels of preservation uh, reboot, which is being led um, by uh, sort of a subgroup of the coordinating committee. Um, Bradley Daigle is the um, is sort of chairing or facilitating uh, this group, um, and he asked me to just provide a really brief update. He had to leave early um, from the group, but uh, I guess the first thing I'll say is. Um, um, the, every, all the information about the about the um, the project is available on the NDSA website, including our, our project plan. And the intention here is to try to be um, as transparent as possible in terms of the process. And really, what we're trying to do here is not so much um, revisit um, a really important document that was last um, revised in uh, hasn't been revised since its original publication in 2013. But it's really, we're, we're trying to build a framework within which the community, us, we can, can revisit this, this document and, and um, engage around it. So the idea here is that we're, we're trying to build uh, sort of the infrastructure within which we can undertake the revision. We're not going to be as experts writing the thing. We're gonna try to engage as much as possible with the community to do this. Um, and as such, there's, um, there are a number of subgroups uh, that will be working on different discrete little areas. Uh, and these were formed based on some of the themes that emerged from a survey that was, uh, that was put out uh, relatively recently. So the, those groups are, will be around uh, implementation, assessment, uh, documentation, the ever mysterious curatorial layer that, mm -hmm. I'll let Bradley talk about that when you see him next. Um, and then teaching advocacy and outreach. Um, there are lots of opportunities for any of you who want to be involved in this project to become involved. Uh, again, it's really, it, you, I mean, you're hearing it down the line, it's all about community effort here. 
Um, so just go to the NDSA website, uh, get in touch with Bradley. Um, all of our contact information is on there, so don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, where we're at right now are the subgroups are forming, they're coming up with work plans, the things that they want to do, uh, and then they're going to be reporting out, they're going to be working up until March or April and then reporting out to the, uh, the larger coordinating group uh, that will, that's sort of overseeing the effort. Um, and then we're going to spend uh, sort of the spring uh, finalizing the document and then really engaging with the community uh, for review and consultation and, and helping it make uh, make it the best we can and, and reflect the um, uh, community input as much as possible. So again, all of that information is on the uh, NDSA website and uh, I encourage you to, to become involved if, if you're interested and you haven't already. Eric. Yeah. Okay, that's big. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to say that, you know, right now is a really great time to get involved in NDSA. You know, following the Digital Preservation Conference, there's a lot of new ideas, there's a lot of new enthusiasm and new, um, you know, faces and new people who are getting involved in the work. Um, so I'd really encourage you, uh, if you're not signed up to the NDSA All Listserv, to, to get signed up on that. Um, check out some of the calls, like folks have said. Um, specifically, the next calls, I think, are going to, you know, the next couple calls as we get back after we've decompressed a little bit, get back and um, get back into the swing of things, those calls uh, are really a good kind of motivational space to, to talk about some of the themes that have been brought up in the, the conference this week. Um, so I'd encourage you all to do that. Um, I'm here representing the Standards and Practices Interest Group. Um, so the Standards and Practices Interest Group works to facilitate a broad understanding of the role and benefit of standards in digital preservation and how to use them effectively to ensure durable and, and usable collections. And so I'm really glad that I <laughs> took a moment to um, go back to the website and you know, check in as to <laughs> what the NDSA uh, Standards and Practices Group was all about because we had a really positive uh, working group discussion today. Um, where we focused on not only standards and practices, but also a kind of educational component that we think um, might be a, a theme that we could really focus in on for the next year. And so as I talk about some of that enthusiasm and, and you know, some of the um, conversations that have been taking place this week, uh, I'm really going to try to hone in on that conversation uh, with some of our newer members uh, on the next call. So I'd, I'd appreciate it and I'd encourage you all uh, to consider um, dropping in for that call. Uh, like the other interest groups, the Standards and Practices uh, group revisited our meeting format last year. Uh, we got a lot of great input from the working group, um, uh, the working lunches. And we also went to a kind of uh, alternating business meeting and topical discussion. Uh, I think we had about six topics that we uh, focused in on. Um, some of those were metadata crosswalking related to the software preservation network. Uh, we also talked about the levels of preservation. There's been a lot of talk <laughs> about the levels of preservation. Um, we had some great conversation around auditing and certification of repositories. And we also had a report out on the Fixity Working Group, some of the, looking a little uh, more closely at some of the data from that report. Um, yeah, and so we also discussed some improvements that we could make to our meeting. And you know, we've moved from Uber conference to Uber conference to Zoom. I like some of these ideas of you know posting the recording and posting the conferences or the uh, um, recordings to YouTube. That's great. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the things that we talked about over lunch was just how we could um, make our car calls welcoming to new members and really kind of understand um, better our newer members' uh, needs and, you know, what they're looking for in NDSA. Um, so I, like I said, and I'll just kind of reiterate, I guess, you know, I'd really uh, encourage you all to consider uh, dropping in on those calls. Um, so I guess at this point, uh, I would like to open up the floor. If I, it doesn't look like there's mics out there, but I guess I could run the mics around. Um, <laughs> I, I'd love to hear if any of you have any kind of comments or questions around uh, the NDSA community and your experience. Um, you know, over the last day and a half, it would be really great to hear from you. 
um, because I think that would, um, you know, give us all something to take back to, to, to some of our calls as well. So um, I'd love to open the floor up and hear from you. And yeah, we could get a mic out there. Yeah. I don't really need my own mic. So. <laughs> we could probably just pass one around up here. So. Yeah. <laughs> there has to be at least one. Sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. I reckon this is the last rock. Mm -hmm. All right. It looks like, ah, see you right when I said something, somebody got it. So this is, I think, my first digital preservation conference, but I've been doing digital preservation work for, I think, what, 16 years? And so I, this isn't a question, this is a comment, and I, when I go to my city council meetings and stuff, I always kind of clamor and hate when people say that. <laughs> but I think, um, so I was here for DLF and then stayed for this and presented. And one of the points of feedback I would suggest is maybe thinking about how can we create, um, it seems like there's a lot of people here starting out and learning, and I think there's a lot of opportunity to think about how we could create spaces for folks um, that, like, I don't think a lot of people just starting out are going to come to this microphone and then talk to you all, like, up on the stage and ask questions. Like, I think uh, DLF had some great, um, like, sort of the note taking and sort of asking questions from the Google Docs and sort of actually actively living, like, doing that. And I think that could be some opportunities for improvement um, in terms of, like, we're all here, this is like an ultimate privilege to be like face to face, right? There's a lot of people that aren't. And it also enables people from far away to contribute that, that weren't able to come. Um, so there could be some times, you know, for doing that. I know you all, this is like on a shoestring and there's, there's only so many of you. <laughs> so I, I acknowledge the sort of challenge of trying to do that. But I think those, that may be a great opportunity. And, and, and also like how, okay, if that's, that's an issue, how do we also kind of think about other uh, things we could do to create the venue for that? Um, and it was really awesome to see some of the presentations, uh, like the power presentation right before this that people were kind of demystifying some of the kind of getting started stuff. So I really appreciated that in the program. But I don't know if that's what you were asking, but. That is, yeah, that's Perfect. fantastic. Thank you so much Thank you. for your yeah. comment. Um, I th you're right. I think that uh, with DLF, uh, where there was like 100 people on the program committee. Uh, there was, I believe, an inclusivity committee, which was um, uh, the group that was asking, watching, and asking those questions. Um, so it's absolutely true that the you know our program committee is much smaller for DigiPres. It has sort of limited um, support, and you know the more that um, you know, we hear these ide these good ideas and we, we can try to incorporate them as long as we have, I guess, the participation and resources to do that. Um, but you, that is a fantastic comment, so thank you so much for, for sharing that. Anyway, I just wanted to say um, thank you very much for the conference. This was actually my first time attendance, um, first time actually in Las Vegas in general. So um, it was a very nice opportunity to also present here today. Um, I think the only thing that I maybe want to comment on, I realize this might just be a reality of how it's structured with like the different portions of the conference with DLF and DigiPress. Um, one thing that I noticed that was a little bit unfortunate was that how uh, it seemed by the time I was able to get around to them uh, Wednesday afternoon, most of the vendors had completely disappeared and a lot of the tables were empty. I know we had like a couple of events, like the little bingo card, but by the time I and maybe some other folks were able to get around to it, there was only half of what was originally there. And again, maybe that's just because it's the reality of people's schedules and the fact that it's coordination between DLF and DigiPress and different sections, but that was one thing that was just a little bit surprising for me to see. And I didn't know if we had like 
uh, scheduled times where we tried to prioritize the vendors or like the stands for displays or if it's just kind of a as it comes basis. Uh, all I have to say is, you know, thank you for that comment. It's just, you know, we're all taking notes up here. Um, so that's really helpful to hear those. those. And uh, in a minute, I'm going to show a couple more slides here. But we have a survey that will go out, and there's a link in the um, uh, slide uh, where we can kind of gather some more input that we can use to uh, improve the, the conference next year. So thank you. Sure, thank you. That also reminded me of another group that I did not mention. We're firing up a new group to look at finance and look at uh, sponsorship, look at you know different models, and even look at how the two conferences occur and working in the community to see how we can evolve that to actually work better uh, for both communities. So I'll be heading that up as I step off of the coordinating committee and I've got a handful of people that have already volunteered, but anybody interested in working on that with me, please send me an email. I'll send out a call to the mailing list. Hey, so I am curious, we all have our own experiences here and we come from different backgrounds and some of us are newer to NDSA and others of y'all have been around for a while. I'm curious if a couple of you could probably maybe tell me and us what your biggest takeaways are, what surprised you about what came out of these proceedings and, and yeah, what, what are you excited about, what surprised you? I'll go first. Uh, this is an excellent question. Uh, I don't know if anybody's ever asked me uh, something like that before, <laughs> like during a conference. That's excellent. Um, I'm very excited about a lot of things. So uh, both the community comments and just like the fact that uh, we get new folks coming in every year and new perspectives. Um, I'm kind of really interested, uh, kind of in the comments, I think it was uh, Aaron with the comments about kind of different tracks. You know, we have folks who are we're talking about, you know, kind of getting started in digital preservation as well as knowing that we really need to start digging into our past standards, practices, and really examining what that means. So a lot of these practices we've had, you know, we're talking about labor, we're talking about sustainability, we're talking about really examining where we are in digital preservation as it's evolved. You know, this is a, a community of practice now that's been around for, for a while. So really starting to examine those things. So digging into both technical problems. I've had conversations with people around assumptions around fixity and how we examine that and how we dive into it and how we make it sustainable. I mean, the NDSA uh, section, uh, Micah put up a really great, great slide that relates to some of the statistics, statistics we have from some of these um, surveys we've run where we recommend you know, fixity checking on every single item, uh, but the number of folks that are actually able to do that, uh, and he had these numbers on the slide, is fairly low. So how do we kind of dig into that? Is that a practice? Is that a uh, resourcing thing? Is that something technically that is sustainable over time? And I'm, I would love to hear from folks about their takeaways, but I'm interested in both digging into continuing this kind of outreach, education, opening of arms to digital preservation, as well as these very complicated, sometimes technical, but sometimes community-based uh, problems that we need to keep thinking about. I don't know if they're ever gonna be solvable, but we need to keep thinking about them and pushing on assumptions and starting to test uh, some of these assumptions. So I'm really energized to, to start doing some of that work. Yeah. Um, I'm. I have a really kind of specific thing, you know, I was talking about our working lunch and it was just um, fabulous. We got new new perspective uh, in our working lunch and that's what our uh, interest group really needed, I feel. Um, but we we came away with uh, kind of a concrete project we'd like to, to look into a little bit and we'll be talking about this on our next call. Um, and that is looking at the uh, syllabi for digital preservation courses to identify um, perhaps some gaps that we might see in those syllabi and seeing if there's a way that we could bring some, you know, educational components um, to help, uh, you know, bolster those, those syllabi. And it was just a great idea. It came from uh, Sheriff Heltzman. Uh, I want to give credit where credit's due. Um, and uh, I'm really excited. You know, I really want to 
I uh, can't wait for the next call. So, yeah. Um, I sort of have two things um, that I was really sort of encouraged to hear a lot about, um, both in, in sessions and, and a lot of people talking about on Twitter too with the hashtags. Um, one is, is hidden labor, um, sort of in the work that we do, but also in the work that those who support our work do. Um, so it's just in, 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 in directly in the work that we do, but also in people like system administrators who support the, the servers that, that store our equipment, you know, and, and the role that they have. Um, so that there's a lot of hidden labor in, in the work that goes into supporting cultural heritage material and preserving and making it available. Um, and starting to surface some of those and broaden those discussions and make all of that work visible. Um, is sort of a theme, I think, across the entire week, not just necessarily digital preservation. Um, but also, um, there was a lot of talk today on Twitter about documentation. Um, which is fantastic uh, because there's just not enough of it in the world. We all need to document. Um, but it's, it's, it's not necessarily um, a fun thing to do for everyone, um, but getting documentation and shared understanding amongst your team, amongst your collaborators, and all those at your institutions that you're working with is so critical to, to really establishing a foundation for a program and seeing people recognize that and the value in it and saying, you know, yes, I could be off preserving and, you know, creating apes and doing something but over here, but I really need to spend the time to, to create this documentation and to, to make sure that, that people understand what this is about. I think, I think that's very important. And it was, I was glad to see, see that um, brought up and, and I really want to go back to some of the sessions I missed that I heard about on Twitter where, where that was really brought up more for thoroughly. And I, I think um, uh, what I'll add uh, to all the great things that, that folks have been talking about here is um, I wasn't uh, so, so much surprised, but just sort of reaffirmed of how special um, this community is um, on a practitioner level for us to be able to get together. Uh, the level of work that, that we're all sort of doing in common uh, in different ways, um, but on common levels, um, I was reminded of the opportunity that we have um, to engage each other. Uh, in, in those ways. So uh, every time I come to NDSA, um, I, there's, a, there's a small cohort that I can always uh, rely on and depend on to be here. Um, but through them, I always meet new people um, and make new connections. Um, so uh, I'll con continue to come, uh, at least in part, for, for those, those reasons. Mm -hmm. All right, well, um, thank you so much for your questions and comments. Um, so I just had a couple more slides that I wanted to share with you. Um, the first is that I hope you will save the date and join us. If you've not heard, uh, DLF and Digital Preservation will be in Tampa, uh, Florida, um, October 16th and 17th. Um, back at the registration desk, they are, I believe, still accepting um, unused and unopened toiletries. Uh, and also, if you'd like to recycle your lanyard, there's a uh, donation box at the registration desk. Um, I'd also ask that uh, I'd also ask that you would, you know, consider if your institution is not already a member of NDSA, um, that maybe you would go back and have that conversation uh, with your institution. Um, membership to NDSA is free, and you know we we really encourage, uh, as we're all up here um, to to say, we really encourage your kind of participation, and we really appreciate that participation as well. Um, so I just wanted to uh, thank you all once again. Um, I mentioned that there is a survey that you can fill out um, to you know provide uh, commentary and and um, you know constructive criticism and and your own, and your feedback and uh, that will go to improve the conference for future years. So um, with that said, uh, thank you and safe travels. Thank you.